Hi and welcome to another episode of More Bang for Her Buck. This is a show about women and money and we promise you it's jargon free. The idea is to give women the keys to their own financial independence and their own freedom because sometimes if you want to walk out of an unsafe place whether that's an unsafe marriage or an unsafe job or just a place where you're unhappy what you need really is money to pay the bills. Um today on this episode of uh, More Bang for Her Buck I'm talking to Ashri Jaiswal. Um she is the co-founder of Zeniosa. Uh, Zeniosa is India's leading fashion pre-loved service. That's, That's a lot good. of words. <laughs> But I'll break that down for you. It's basically right. where you can get a Louis Vuitton bag that was owned by someone else yes. at a much cheaper price. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Right? Bang on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> the company itself is 5 years old yes. and uh, she's here to answer some big questions that I have about women, businesses and scaling up. Okay. I know this from my own experience that I think women are really scared of getting big uh, we're really scared of growing we're really scared of scaling because it feels like that's when we lose control and most of the women entrepreneurs i know or most mm. women starting up businesses are saying look i want to start a small little business mm. i want to start a small little bake shop i want to start a small little right. uh, boutique right i don't want 700 stores across the country no thank you i don't need that attention why what can we do differently hmm. should we be aspiring to scale hmm. and what would that mean for us on a day to day basis if we chose the path of growth so those are the questions that i like answered by the end of the show i want to start really by asking you first hmm. of all why are we like this why 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 do we like to keep things small because studies have shown it yeah. okay we want to have a small little business yeah not a big empire mm-hmm. why I think it's the way we've been brought up because even though uh, across very educated families even though women are pushed to pursue their dreams be a career woman but at the end of the day it's always added by but you know you also have to take care of the house you also have to take care of the kids i mean you can run your own business or you can work but remember that you have these uh, responsibilities and mm. that's fed to us ever since we were very little and i think that stays in our mind subconsciously and that's what happens when we actually start something or we start to get big in our career irrespective of whether you're an entrepreneur you're working whatever right at one point we're like oh no but you know i also have to make sure groceries are there i also have to make sure my kids are taken care of so mm-hmm. let me not scale up too much as long as i'm making some money which is enough for me and i can call myself financially independent i'm good so i think somehow it's our upbringing and you know the the way we've been conditioned also and i think that's need to be like yeah. we were actually talking about yeah. before yeah. we started the episode there's yeah. also a certain age where hey you, if your husband gets moved to the yeah. uae or yeah. the us or the uk yeah. you're going to yeah. drop everything and bounce yeah. so yeah. Oh, I feel it should be I mean more than men or women or husband or wife it should mm. be whoever's career in in that point of time is important mm. and is flourishing right because sometimes I feel uh, I mean I had a manager back in the US who gave me this simple formula that every 5 years me and my wife decide who we are, whose career is going to take priority so the first 5 years were mine now it's her turn so he's moved somewhere else because of the wife and I think that's a very good way to do it because that way both men and women get that kind of a freedom mm. rather than you know just just being like no because i'm a woman i need to move or no because i'm a man i need to move i think you should both uh, assess your careers and then take a mutual take call, a call. Yeah. so it's never been easier to start a business at least right. in the uae there's so many different kinds of licenses you right. have uh, things like shopify that make it super easy for you to just um, right. set up and start so what should you keep in mind even before you start a business and hmm. in in a in a very simple way what can hmm. i feed my baby today so that hmm. he can grow up and become popoy in 10 years <laughs> <laughs> right i think one of the things that again women tend to do right is they uh, really limit themselves that nay uh, i am going to wait till i get married to start my business hmm. or i'm going to wait till now that i've gotten married i'm going to wait till i have a kid and give the kid 2 to 3 years and then grow my business i think we need to get out of that thinking and start taking our careers uh, you know in, in, on the front front seat we need to put our careers on the front seat because everything around you will start working you know based on the situation that you are in mm-hmm. so i think that's rule number 1 that you if you want to start something today don't worry about how others are going to be you're going to manage everything you just have to start and there are signs that you need to look out for which will tell you that your baby which is your business at this point is really going to grow and you know as women we also have that guilt so i think we just need to learn how to play 
with our own mind so that we can start and start seeing these signs very clearly and start What to grow. What are these signs? Because I hmm. know. I know I can see it in other people's business, right? Okay. Sometimes I see other people seeing it in my business. I know there okay. are women like me out there. Right. What are the signs that this is no normal baby? Yeah. This is a popoy idea you're seeing. Yeah. On. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know we tend to always look at the financial signs. Yeah. Ki yar, is my business making enough money? While mm -hmm. that's very important, sometimes right, it's very difficult to make money in a business from day one. So you need to look at, hey, am I getting traction about this idea? Maybe on social media, are a lot of people talking about it? Hey, am I going to a VC? And the VC always seems interested, but wants a large chunk of my business. That's a sign. That means that you're doing something right, and that's the reason why someone wants a big chunk or an operating stake, which you're not understanding. Mm. Because we're like, oh, you know, a VC really wants uh, maybe 51% of my business. That's great. I'm going to give it to them. No, that means that you're sitting on something big, and you need to understand that. You're sitting on gold. You're sitting on a gold mine, which you probably don't understand. Right. Okay, that's a that's a lot to take in, and <laughs> um, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about. You just said when you know when you speak to a VC, when you speak to an investor. Right. I think just the prospect of that is super scary for a lot of people, including <laughs> right. myself. So right. we're going to come back and talk about how do we navigate those conversations and Got not it. get eaten up in the bargain. Got it. Okay, we'll take a quick break. More bang for her buck is a really important conversation around women and money. And if you think that you can contribute, and by this I mean if you've got a case study, a story that you'd like us to discuss with our experts, if you've got a bit of research that you think we should include in the show, or there's an opinion that you think we should feature, we would love to hear from you. Do drop us a DM on Instagram, or you can just email us at info@brownontheoutside.com. So we're talking about women businesses and mm -hmm. scaling, right? Okay. Um, now we've talked about people who are starting out businesses, right. but what if I've been running a company for the last three to four years now? Right. Let's right. say a, a, a store that sells cosmetics or right. um, a bakery. Right. And now three, four years in, I feel like okay, now it's time for me to shift gears from being a mom and pop shop mm -hmm. to now getting. Let's let's start scaling. Yeah. Let's yeah. make it big. Yeah. Um, what what are some of the changes I need to make to the business itself mm -hmm. before I even start walking down that path? Okay. Uh, when it comes to scaling up, right, you need to really understand what is it that you require to scale up. Sometimes people think, "Nay, I just need to be get funded, and that's the only way I'll get." Uh, you know, uh, I'll see that kind of a scale. But sometimes it just could be your team. You don't even have to worry about raising funds. You can probably just find someone, give them some equity, and sort of start building that team, which might help you scale. Hmm. Now, if uh, capital is what you're looking for, again, I know it's very scary sometimes to go out there. And every time I look at Shark Tank, I'm like, uh, do I want to really pitch there or not? But you need to understand that Star Shark Tank is not the only place you need to go out. Um, it's also on TV. So there's a lot of you drama. Know, drama around it, <laughs> yeah. but in reality, sometimes things are not like that. I've met some very nice uh, investors myself who've spoken to me so nicely, who've given me opportunities. Yeah. And you should also realize that there's a lot of non-traditional ways to get capital. For example, when we started, I started Zinosa Bootstrap with my co-founder, and initially we wanted to keep it that way because you know sometimes excess capital in the start also you don't know what to do like with it. it. Oh my god! And then you money. you outsource <laughs> everything and you don't yeah. learn anything. Thing about your own business, so I think mm -hmm. we decided to keep it bootstrapped for a bit. And when we started seeing signs of scale for us, uh, it was a lot of Instagram follower increase, and we were like, "Oh my God, what's happening? This is a sign." We started seeing more orders than usual. We started seeing that people were talking about us, and we were like, "Okay, we need to scale up now." And rather than going out and giving away equity, we mm -hmm. decided that an alternate solution is RBF, which is revenue-based funding, where you get money. And you just pay a little bit of interest. It's not like a uh, business like, loan. Yeah, it's not like a loan because there's no collateral involved. Right. But that helped us scale immediately, and we were like, "Whoa!" We did not know this option exists because even for you to raise uh, VC capital, one of the founders. Uh, I mean, this is when you have a two founder team, right? Imagine being a solo founder running day to day operations, trying to go out and raise funds. What are you going to do? So you need to evaluate what's more important. Does your business need you? Because sometimes, if you take a back step and start raising funds, your business suffers. Hmm. So you really need to understand what kind of uh, 
you know capital is required it's not always like shark tank hmm. sometimes you know you go out there you pitch you get a positive response and you got confident on your own right hmm. so there is there is i think the simple step here is go out talk to as many people as you possibly can that's to a, remove that fear yeah that that's that actually that's one of the scary things right okay. because in my head where are these venture capitalists they all sit in some coffee shop like where are they like <laughs> they where do, am i going to find they do. them they do. you know where shops. do i look like how do i even start yeah okay uh interesting question i think one of the things that we did when i launched is when we launched both me and my co-founder are engineers by profession okay. we had no about idea about how to run a fashion startup and we needed mentors hmm. uh to help shape our business and we were like okay where do we find mentors but sometimes we don't realize that all even the simplest or the most difficult answers are actually available on google hmm. if you just try to google something you will find it you will find contacts you will just have to blindly call them email them and something will click for us it was an incubator which is in im bangalore which is nsr cell where we immediately applied without even knowing what an incubator means because 5 years back we really didn't know what it was all about and then we got so much care Uh, nourishing as early first time founders and then those networks actually introduced us to more vcs and i mm. think that's what you need to focus on is human capital as well mm. build your network because that's going to take you somewhere or the other women in general are so hard working and if someone notices that they tend to share it with other people that is so great that's such great advice okay what should i be no let's say i've you know cold call somebody send them an email they say right. okay great meeting right. and here's a new investor right so what are some of the questions i need to ask myself what paperwork or what, what homework do i need to do before i go and meet that investor Correct. so that let's put it frankly i don't look dumb in that meeting yeah yeah <laughs> one of the first things you need to do is have a pitch deck ready okay have a pitch deck ready at every time whenever you're going out meeting an investor if they need a pitch deck have it ready okay. secondly have a 30 second elevator pitch mm. because sometimes you prepare lengthy pitch decks and a 2 or 10 page business uh, detailed report but if someone asks you that hey what is what do you do and then you're like you know you freeze you don't know so always have a 30 second elevator pitch prepared mm. and i would say another thing is research a lot about that investor what do they like because sometimes the conversations get very mechanical you need to make it more professional i think men do that quite a lot because they, they go out they meet people they go for coffee meetings in that process they sometimes even find business partners but women um really don't go out there quite a lot and also when we're going we're like what am i going there for yeah, yeah right? right it's like am i meeting you what because i want your money or yeah. i need your support i don't have anything to ask you for Correct. i don't know if i'll meet you yeah right but sometimes that's okay that's yeah. okay because you've just started out uh and be it a woman or a male founder i think sometimes you're not really sure but that's okay you mm-hmm. have to meet people and then you will improve on your own so don't put too much pressure on yourself ki yaar i don't know uh, you know there are so many jargons right i was just <laughs> going to ask so yeah. if i go to that meeting and then they say some like word that has to do with equity and yeah. i don't know what it means so have you ever had one of those situations yeah, where you I mean, brought a word back home and quickly googled it yeah yeah i mean uh, you know there's so many times initially where we used to be on uh, uh, google meet calls and they would be like oh what is your cac what is your aov what is your atv uh, and we were like um okay but then later we realize it's very okay to say you know what i will get back to you on that rather than just fumbling and just saying something incorrect or just like looking at your phone and like looking at each other hey i don't know the answer to that but i will get back to you okay. and that's okay and that's okay that's absolutely okay that's how you will learn right imagine not going to that first meeting dreading that oh i don't know what those terms mean it's better to rather go for a meeting if you don't understand something hey you know what this is my first time i'm going to get back to you Okay. As simple. Okay. Yeah. I already feel better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> At the end of uh, the next section, I hope to answer the question when we're getting into this partnership founder business. Right. Um, how does one make sure that you don't get the raw end of the deal? Okay. Yeah. So hopefully yeah. uh, you'll be able to answer that question for me after yeah. a little break. If you're listening to us on Spotify or watching us on YouTube but you don't follow us on Instagram yet then please do all you've got to do is search for more bank for her buck or brown on the outside and hit follow.
All right. So let's talk about partnership and investors and funding. Okay. Right. Um, and make this as basic and as jargon free as you can imagine. Actually. Okay. <laughs> I'll try my best. <laughs> When okay. I'm going in to meet someone who is likely to be a partner or is interested in being a partner, okay. first of all, what do I need to be aware of? And okay. secondly, if they are big and I am small, how do I make sure that I don't get eaten by a shark? Because that's really damn scary. Right. Right. I think that that sense of understanding whether or not you're getting a raw, the raw end of the deal also comes from experience. So meet as many people as you potentially can. Mm. Have a very solid, uh, you know, again network of people who are going to guide you and support you. Because trust me, you can't do this alone. You absolutely can't do this alone because you need to come back and ask whoever is your support system. Hey, am I getting? You know, am I getting caught into something that maybe I don't deserve or I deserve something better? Again, as women, we if we see, say, for example, someone's giving you one crore, you sometimes get so happy and you're like, take everything, just give me that money. But no, you need to stop. You need to understand. You need to talk to people. You need to ask that person what they are bringing into the table, that you are going to give them so much. Very early on in our business as well, we had an amazing investor, someone so accomplished, absolutely from the same line of business. and they wanted a big chunk of the business right and as a first time founder we were just like few months into the business and we're like oh my god this is so good but then we were like wait it took us a lot of effort but we had to say it out loud we're like hey uh, by the way what are you bringing to the table and that person sort of froze and they were like no but you know i am so and so so and so of a big brand i mean you know what like my name is enough and we were like no you need to bring something to the table and that's why i'm going to let go of my baby and give a part of my baby to you because it genuinely feels like that mm -hmm. so i think don't be afraid to ask that question right yeah you if right. if you feel that you're getting a raw deal just stand up for yourself i think when it comes to bringing that conversation home and speaking to your support system right. most women yeah. will either call up um our romantic partners yeah. you know yeah. or a brother or dad yeah. if we have yeah. one of those in our lives yeah. um to get that advice right Correct. but why do we need to go beyond that very intimate circle because i think again uh, i hate to say this but sometimes that circles also part of your immediate family who sometimes may think that are you are like so much effort you also have a kid you also have a house kya hai theek hai na sell your business get get money take it like take whatever but that's why you need to go to out of that network someone needs to actually you know give you a reality check and be like knock knock you're worth so much more and if you're lucky the way i am you find that within your close uh, network as well right but some people aren't yeah. i know there are too many people too many partners who sort of demotivate de the other person you know even also parents. because you getting that funding or you scaling is going to dramatically affect their comfort level and also the and change the dynamics of the relationship <laughs> yeah. right so sometimes that's that's exactly why you need to have this circle of mentors yeah. someone who understands your business someone who's been there with you and you will build that relationship trust me everyone finds that very early on if they are really looking for it so i think there's also this idea with women that if we if we have co-founders or partners right. or whatever in a business right. it has to be marriage you have to tick all the boxes we have to agree on everything yeah. we have to be the best friends we have to yeah. but i don't think men look at partnership in the same absolutely way when it comes to not. business absolutely right not. and i think that's where we lose out a lot because yeah. we want you to be everything we want yeah. you to be morally in line with us financially in line with us <laughs> in a lifestyle like in line yeah. with us yeah. but um okay what what are the questions i should be asking yeah. what what are those important boxes for this partner to take and what's right. actually not so important right i think number one if you if when you talk about a partner in business you're talking about someone you're going to be actually doing business with and it's as important as a marriage right mm. because you're going to be sharing a lot more time resources money mm. and at the end of the day I feel that as a co-founder I need to have that trust in that person. I got really lucky because you know I know my co-founder for the last decade or more because we've been friends. So there are certain boxes that do tick. But again, right, initially it's okay to have uncomfortable conversations as well. I mean a lot of women sort of be like nay nay why should I ask him about like or her about more equity? It's okay na. I'm getting something. No. Stand up for yourself. I think it's very important but at the same time you need to see whether or not you can trust that person with your baby which is your business, right? And I think also another thing about women is go yeah. beyond trust and yeah. actually put it down in black and white. Yeah. I think the tendency for a lot of women and this is true yeah, even for right. marriage. You're it's right. like right. 
you should see the dishes and know the dishes need to be done i expect that from you emotionally yeah, yeah. and we can't extend that yeah. into a business partnership yeah, which is absolutely. why do you not care about my feelings yeah <laughs> and i think you know i've seen so many men who are working together they could be colleagues they could be business partners right they're okay to have an argument but as women we're very scared to have arguments yeah. right why it's okay to disagree right even in a marriage even in a business partnership you're going to have disagreements and it's okay to fight about it and next day just sleep over it and come back to work right i think women get really emotionally sometimes affected by a disagreement but that's absolutely fine you're going to be working with that person 10 to 12 hours a day there is going to be disagreement and if there's no disagreement that means you're you two are very similar and you're adding the same skills and strengths which is you know not the best you need someone who adds another perspective to your uh, yeah be it yeah. a marriage be it a business partnership yeah. right so i think yeah. it's okay to have disagreements i think women should know that that it's okay you you may fight that doesn't mean that tomorrow that person's going to be like i don't want to do business with you but <laughs> that's not the case men do it all the time and even if they do it's okay yeah even um, if so it's okay. I, i think you've definitely convinced me okay. um that it's important to scale you've definitely yes. made me feel like theek hai it's okay you can go and meet a vc they won't ask you such tough questions if they yeah. do just say you yeah. don't know yeah. have you ever in your experience met other founders who've gone to the brink of scaling and then said nahi nahi nah, this is not for me turned around and come back um and been happy for it or sad for it i will be very honest i have uh, because i've been part of so many startup incubators i've seen a lot of men and women both hmm. in business right but i feel like women founders do it a little bit more as opposed to men i think what happens is they feel that somewhere or the other you know it'll be okay even if they don't do this whereas i think men think that no this is how i need to earn money and provide for my family so they are a little bit more resilient and i think somewhere again that comfort zone comes in women's minds maybe that okay you know my husband too does earn now what do i need money for but men have that pressure which is actually sometimes very scary for them as well right because they feel no i have to feed the family i have to take care of my kids and my wife but women don't have that pressure hmm. and i think sometimes a lack of that pressure makes you take these decisions hmm. that it's okay i mean tomorrow i will not do anything theek hai chalega i mean what for yeah what for <laughs> right so yeah. i think that needs to change you we talk so so much about equality but sometimes we don't understand that we're not taking enough pressure off our spouses heads to run the house right or, so i think that's very important the risk to jump taking in taking the risk to jump in yeah, right i mean yeah. it's it's okay you have to you have to take the risk you have to be very resilient because trust me today if a company is a unicorn it has taken 10 years for them in the making right that's not something that we see we mm. feel that success would be immediate it never is it takes a lot of hard work hard break uh, sleepless nights but you need to you need to take that with a pinch of salt and get up the next morning be like okay i'm ready to do this again <laughs> yeah. amazing thank you so much for being on this show thank you um, lovely Arshi. lovely to be here um and if you guys have any questions if you're an entrepreneur yourself and you've sort of battled any of these questions and you think ah oh, man i wish i could have a sit down with her i wish i could ask some questions please do send them to us more bank for her back is a show about women and money and we promise to continue to answer your questions without that jargon and ruffle a few feathers this is a show produced by Brown on the outside if you've got a comment a question mail us leave it with us and we'll have it answered thank you for watching this show is produced by Brown on the outside a thank you to our production team the dark room our producer sara anand research and intern hiral varma and on hair and makeup neha shah